today's Snow Mace Warrior partner is Sheath Underwear. And we want to take the time to thank them for the offer that will be provided during this episode and for teaming up with the podcast to provide a better listening experience for you. You can find out more about Sheath Underwear at sheathunderwear.com or by visiting snowmacewarrior.com. What's up, guys? Still Mace Warrior here. And, uh, you know, just, just really quickly, I had the best month of my life. Uh, last month, I got to meet uh, Tyler Valencia from Kips, and I got to meet Mr. Mace Matt in person. It was freaking amazing. And I just can't thank them enough for putting out awesome workshops. Um, I, I think my mind got blown away by it. And uh, I wanted to mention that because today we have Frank DeMeo. And he is the owner of The Cave. He is founder and coordinator of Mace Fit, which obviously that's a workshop um, that hopefully we'll get to talk about, a certification workshop. And a little bit about Frank. Uh, He has tons of certifications, just to name a few. Certified Underground Strength Coach Level 2. Certified Vintage Strength Mason Club Coach Level 1. Certified Battling Ropes Coach Level 1. And then the list goes on. Um, and he is also a former, a former SSG with the U.S. Army Paratroopers with a background in martial arts. And he even had a full contact fight club in the 1970s, which would be cool to talk about. All right. So, uh, Frank, introduce yourself. I know listeners are going to be really excited over this. I know I've, uh, you know, I've been like thinking about you as a guest for like the longest time. So tell us your story, like in fitness, and maybe a little bit before that. Uh, thank you, Victoria. I'm uh, humbled and uh, grateful to be on your show. Uh, you run a great show. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, my, uh, my fitness journey actually started, you really want the whole enchilada or the short version? <laughs> whatever, you, whatever you want to talk about, I'm good with it. Okay. Well, I, I, I try to uh, c- compress it, okay? I was the uh, proverbial short, fat kid, got bullied at school, and, uh, yep. <laughs> the common story. Me short. too. <laughs> I'm still short, but I'm not fat. Fat is good. But anyway, the, uh, had a uh, Marine Corps dad and a Coast Guard mom, so you know, with no pampering or coddling about any of me getting beat up or harassed, it was like, okay, you need to get, okay, swim team. Next four years, swim team. Got slimmed down, competitive swimming. And, uh, but I was still small, so I was born into similar problems at school and stuff. And about uh, 13 years old, I got my first weight set, started lifting, and uh, got strong pretty fast, so that was good. So, you know, the area I lived in, there was still, you know, fighting just happened, you know, it was just that kind of an area. And um, mm-hmm. so I got involved with martial arts when I was 17 and did that for a couple of decades and, and on. Spent some time with the Army paratroopers and transitioned from, uh, you know, from martial arts later on into strength training. And you mentioned the Fight Club earlier. Yeah, yeah. That actually was what triggered me to go into strength training after quite a few years of martial arts. And that came down to a five-round fight with a guy that was about 60 pounds bigger than me. Wow. Uh, Things went pretty well for four and a half rounds, and then he knocked me out. <laughs> and uh, But even though I had hit this man with my best shot with kicks, caught him with two solid kicks in the head, and he just sucked it up. And he was still standing. It was my strongest weapon, and he just sucked it up like it was a you know, BB gun off a rhinoceros, you know? Wow. And then he knocked me out. So then I realized when I woke up, <laughs> my very sore jaw, sore jaw, excuse me, that... Uh, I didn't have enough stopping power. I'm going to look at strength training. Right. So that's kind of how that happened. First, I found uh, kettlebells around 2003. And um, so I actually found the CrossFit in 2004 in its very beginnings and spent about 12 years with them, transitioned away from that to do my own type of training. And that kind of brings us up to date to where we are now. Right on. So what made you kind of transition from CrossFit over to like what you're doing now, which is like mace and clubs and just the unconventional stuff? Okay. Well, actually, I don't have any uh, hard feeling towards CrossFit or anything negative to say about them. A, a great organization and tremendous athletes and coaches. 
So nothing but good. But I had been uh, also about the time I started following them. I had several things happen in 2004. One was finding them. The other one was finding Zach Evanesh, my one of my mentors. The other one was finding Bud Jeffries, another one of my mentors, and uh, and finding uh, Russian martial arts. Uh, I started training at uh, a little place that down here called the Russian Combat Academy in, in uh, Sarasota, Florida. And I'd already had quite a few years of martial arts training before that. And I only got to work with them for about six months, but there was a real eye opener for how different they approached everything. And all their, you know, their, their instructors are m mainly former um, Spesnats. Uh, operative from a, a Russian military, so wow. they, yeah, they don't mess around. Wow. It's a real eye opener. So now we come forward. Um, oh yeah, Jed Johnson, 2004, also the grip guy. So right on. all those things have contributed to my training style ever since. I'm still in touch with Zach Evanish almost every day. Bud Jeffries almost every day. Uh, Jed Johnson periodically, but they greatly influenced my training, and this was all parallel to the other okay so they mm -hmm. kind of are like twins non-identical twins okay <laughs> born at the same time but they don't look alike so i eventually saw the need to just go my own way on a, on a peaceful friendly basis and uh started you know got the cave going which used to be one of their gyms transitioned out of that renamed it rebranded it and uh just really started focusing on our other methods of training Right, which is Mason Club. So, uh, when's like the first time you got into Mace? Like, how'd you get to the Mace? In other words, I had been uh, in touch with some of the guys from out in Alabama. That um, Dave Hall run the Agogi Gym out there in in Alabama. Good, good athlete, good coach, and uh, and they've been using the Addicts Club for a while. Him and uh, Chip Conrad did a review video on it one time, product review. Yeah. I was watching it and I'm like, and I put in the comment section, I need to get some clubs. They were doing clubs that day. So Don Giafardino, who's the owner of edX, he hit, the, hit a reply to me and says, You're like, you know, talk to me. I make clubs. Right so on. There, Don, who lives on the other side of Florida, he drove all the way across the state to do a free workshop at, at the cave. Uh, wow. And January 2016 and uh, I just like I took to it right away I just saw this is the next wave of fitness right here this is it you know so so you just got into mace right because 2016 or were you doing that prior no 2016 actually I had seen the first person who ever showed me a mace exercise was actually Bud Jeffries back during a strongman workshop and that was in i got it on my wall right here <laughs> that was in 2000 and that one was 2010. oh okay so we were doing like 360s with an improvised mace so and it was like it really didn't register on me back then and back then also probably a little bit before that i'd read uh, scott sonnen book years ago on the circular strength and it was like it didn't register it looked great it was looked like it had promise, but it didn't register on me, and it looked like way too expensive for my blood. And so I just kind of filed it away in my training library. And I don't, the guy's a great coach, and uh, but it wasn't the right time, you know. Yeah. So even though I was exposed to it years ago, it just it, everything had its own time, you know. Right on. So going back to the workshop in 2016, let's continue on that. What happened there? Well, uh, I started implementing it into our regular, we call case strong training of the day as warm ups or as mm -hmm. the conditioning at the end of being strong man or powerlifting, whatever we we're doing that day. And uh, people really started taking to it. So eventually we saw the need for a standalone class and started grasping my programming that I was currently using and adapting it to maces and clubs. And it was a great fit. People liked it. They started coming to the standalone classes that are Mason Club only, no, nothing else. No merging uh, with other things. I still periodically will use them uh, as part of my warm up or conditioning for my main workouts. I'd have 
We have 10 uh, Mason classes a week, standalone classes. Wow, that's and, quite a few. Uh, let's see, the night classes get more, you know, morning classes, not so, but the night classes, uh, people love it and they come in after work and they, they grab their Mason and clubs and, and get busy, you know? Yeah. Tanya and so came up, uh, like, he came up like three different times to do workshops for us. And then finally, I went down to um, the Miami area where he, he was uh, working with uh, Lionel Lamarck down there at Lion Strong. And uh, had, they had a certification down there. And I'd already been, now I'd already been using it for a couple of years now. And I went down there, went through that program, which was uh, set up by Valerie Palowski and Don Giacardino, the old vintage strength program. All right, right. So that's, uh, oh yeah, plus, <laughs> you mentioned Rick Brown a minute ago, Valerie turned me on to Rick Brown's online class. So I trained with Rick Brown online for about a year and a half. Right on. It was a big impact because every week we're there and the class was small, you know, so it was a lot of uh, personal interaction. And, uh, you know, I give my videos up, he critiqued my videos and uh, you know, tell me what to do. So after a year and a half of training with Rick that way, um, I really felt very well prepared on the mace to, uh, to go further with that. And the clubs, just the clubs are just phenomenal. Yeah, and so I wanna talk about that too, cause you, you don't just use maces, you use clubs. And for listeners who aren't into clubs, can we go a little bit into that? Like what are clubs, what are they good for? And how do they pair with the mace, in your opinion? Okay, with the the clubs, so we use, uh, as you mentioned earlier in your PDF, specifically addicts, adjustable clubs, and they're a plate-loaded club, just like you plate-load a barbell. Right. You change your weights, like 10 different weight selectors on your mates or club, with only buying one. But that worked out really good for group classes. But the uh, the clubs themselves, you know, when you're work, working with a mace, you're going to pick up uh, like a 10 to 2 or 360, quite a bit of momentum if you know how to utilize it correctly, okay? Uh, clubs are shorter, and uh, so you can use quite a bit more weight, but you're not going to get as much momentum involved. So it's a little more uh, of the strength factor. Not that maces don't take strength, they do. I mean, watch Brad, Brad Hutchins swing into 50 pounder, you know it takes strength. Yeah. Uh, so, but the clubs are good because we like to do a lot of, um, bilateral work or I'd call it double club exercise where we have two going at once. And uh, so the thing of it is we, we built, we're, we're basically strength based in, in makes fit. Big believers in strength, big believers in solid technique. So with the clubs, what I find we can do is we can build strength and we can build muscle endurance. And uh, you know, some of our we do low rep, we program very similar to barbell training uh, we do low rep heavy club work to build the strength. We do higher rep lighter for muscle endurance. And of course they all build, you know, coordination, midline stabilization, all those other good things. But the uh, clubs also give us a lot of opportunity to do something most people may not think about in a mace class, particularly is that we also do quite a bit of isometrics and oh. uh, isotonic exercise. So, you know, you know, the, uh, like if we're doing a, a crucifix squat, you get both arms out to the side with a club in each one. Now you're going to squat. And, uh, that sounds squat, cool. It is a hard thing to do. Okay. Yeah. Try it. You'll love it. <laughs> love it. Love it when you do it. I love it when it's over. It's, yeah. But it's a good one. So we do a number of different types of isometric exercises and isotonic, which are slow moving exercises. They're, not as dead stop like an isometric, but they're moving, but they're moving slow and controlled. Which mainly come out of my old uh, interaction with the Russian martial arts. So, right on. They do a lot of their exercise very slow. Like they'll do a, like a, a if they do a squat, for instance, to take one, you know, or a push up. If you know, 60 seconds on the way down, 60 seconds on the way up. Wow. You can't lay on the floor, you know, that's that kind of stuff. So we incorporate that type of thing into our club work and whatever we can also with the mates of the club, they're more versatile for that. And then in the interim, we have uh, our short mates called the Addicts Arc, A-R-C. And that's um, 
mid-range between the two implements, and that's a great, great versatility right there. So that's a lot of our kneeling or seated uh, work that we do, and that's a, that's a great tool. So that's a little bit of – the arc is a transitional tool between the club and the mace. You can, you can do both exercises with that, club exercise oh. or mace exercise. That's interesting. It's cool to hear that because I don't think I got that out of Don's episode. By the way, for listeners, there is an episode with the owner of the ADEX Club. So if you guys want to check that out. But uh, it's cool. It's cool to hear a little bit more about the products and then how you guys use it. So you use it for clients at the cave. Now, Mace Fit, um, let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, you know, what's the curriculum like? Um, you just mentioned the crucifix stuff. Is that part of it? And like, Let's learn a little bit about Mace Fit. Sure. That's, um, well, actually, you know, once we had our standalone classes running for a while, I used to just call them Steel Club and Mace classes. And it was just like, I just didn't quite get it. So one day I said, okay, we're going to call these Mace Fit classes. Uh-oh, I lost you for a second. Oh, ah, there we go. I was trying to fix it. That's okay. That's for my end. Um, so anyway, I started putting Mesa classes on my schedule and Valerie Palowski up in New Jersey and Donnie from uh, Deerfield Beach down here in Florida, they messaged me and said, I love that name. That is great. And I love what you can They've been watching our training for since we started. So, and, and the guys are getting strong and girls getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And then once they added the name to it, they just like, God, that's it. <laughs> you know, it's like we need to make that into a certification. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we started collaborating on that uh, back in January of this year, and started brainstorming together to put it together, and uh, held our first certification in April, which right here at the cave we had. Uh, Okay, now you might expect this already. Had almost all women show up. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah, yeah, we had like five girls show up, and uh, then we had a couple of guys. But uh, one guy showed up in person. One guy, we uh, we we got in with us later on, including one one uh, adaptive athlete who gets certified has a prosthetic leg. Oh wow! Yeah, so she was. Uh, well, she did fine. So she was our first adaptive makes the coach in the country and uh yeah she's something else that's awesome that was, uh april and now we have um our next one of course is in north carolina uh in september 22nd 23rd this month so we're going to coach up there invited us up to uh, train his staff up there so we're going up to do that and uh it is open to the public also but he wanted to get his own coaches uh, certified so he invited us up so uh, right we're going up there to do that. As far as uh, the programming, you know, Mesa really is it's a programming programming program. Okay, we're there. We're not just to teach you how to swing a mace. But, I mean, you can go on YouTube and learn how to do a, a ten to two. Right. Even if you never had one in your hand before. Okay. And uh, and that's good. I'm glad people can do that because if they want to train at home. They want to learn so a little something. They can do that right off of YouTube or other social media. So we want to do a set of mace fit to teach people how to implement a sustainable mason club training program at their training facility. That's the main thrust of the whole thing. Right. Right on. So, you know, are you guys going to have like, so the certification, like the mace fit certification is meant for like trainers and stuff like that. And I always have to ask this with like everyone, but uh, do you ever plan to have like a workshop, just like a regular workshop, like for people to try it out, like average people, not trainers? Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, we'll be scheduling uh, a number of them in the upcoming year. And this year here, um, our one in North Carolina is our last public certification. We may still do some private certifications between now and December, end of the year. Uh, Public workshops, yes, most definitely. We're big believers in that. And uh, we want everybody to have a chance to come in and learn. And we have made a, an active, actively promoted it to the adaptive community to make sure because they're in a wheelchair or they're on prosthesis 
um, they can do this. Right. Uh, is it possible like for, I, I'm, cause we're talking about that. Is it possible maybe for like people missing, like, you know, limbs and stuff like that? Do you think it's possible for them to use a mace or, sure. um, we yeah. yeah, we just had that one girl to have one leg amputated above the knee. That's crazy. Yeah, That's really cool. Prosthetic leg and went through, uh, everything and you know, we, we adapted it as we had to, you know, which is one of the main things we stress uh, in our certification uh, seminars is uh, if you're, I'm sure most everybody in the strength world knows who Dr. Fred Hatfield was. They call him Dr. Spot. And he had seven rules of training. But his rule number one was uh, the law of individual differences. So that's one of the first things we teach that you have to be able to gear it to the individual and their situation, whatever it is. Wow. And, and, and you guys teach that. I'm sorry? And you guys teach that, like during your, your certifications and stuff like that? Yes, exactly. And uh, so we want people to not be uh, limited if they are missing a limb or something like that. We want them to come. We want them to come. We'd be thrilled to work with them. In fact, uh, the gal that I was talking about earlier, her name is Vaughn Chambers. And uh, she's actually a Marine Corps veteran, but she didn't lose her leg in the Marine Corps. She always tells me it's not from the Marines. I didn't lose it there. So anyway, but she's a tough, tough, tough girl. Uh, she actively does a powerlifting and strong woman competition. Wow. With one leg. Yeah, she's something else. And uh, you might want to have her on your show someday. She's someone yeah, else. Yeah, definitely. Chamber. So she's right now, um, we have what we call the Mesa Pipeline, which is a training process. It's a two-year training process to bring people up to become certification presenters. And she's involved with that right now. So but it is, I mean, there's required reading, there's study, there's all, it's like there's nothing given away uh, in this program. I mean, you got to earn every, every bit of it. So to go to the level two Mace Fit, it, it's, it's two years, unless for some reason we show exceptional advancement. <coughs> Excuse me. You are uh, exceptionally adept at learning things and applying them. Uh, they you may get moved up a little faster. We also wow. require them to uh, assist at three certifications before they can start helping to actually teach certification. That's awesome. I, I love to hear about, about what you're doing with the cave and mace fit because it is a little different than what's out there just talking about and speaking about it. And I think what I like about it the most is how you implement both mace and clubs now can we go a little bit for you know maybe first-time listeners or first-time mace or club uh individuals can we talk a little bit about the benefits like what are the benefits like in your opinion i always ask this but in your opinion benefits of the mace and the clubs sure it's um most people train if they train with weights in a very linear fashion if you're going to deadlift or you're going to do a snatch, okay? Or you're going to do a bench press. You want the bar to move straight, okay? And that's fine. That's good for that's good for that, okay? But the body is capable of so much more and many other types of movement than that. So we we coined a phrase a while ago that it's plugging the gaps in people's fitness, okay? So by adding in what we call a centrifugal strength training which is a kind of a catchphrase as part of the makes fit thing and cardio without running. The people are going to be able to, maybe some people can't run. Uh, they got an injury, they've been sick, or they just hate running. They can get uh, a whole bunch of cardio without running in this type of program. And that is really good. Now for people also, um, strengthening your grip, your coordination, your midline stabilization, um, you know, like I just said, your uh, endurance, muscle endurance, and your strength, all those things will um, are built into the program. That's awesome. All right. So for listeners, there you go. Um, so do you have any, like, personal, like, favorite books that you've read, people people should check out um, when it comes for mace and clubs? You know what? I I have 
one on my desk over there. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the art of mace lift, mace lifting. It just came out this last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. You saw that advertised a while ago. Yes. Uh, a real good one. Uh, years ago, Rick Brown did a downloadable ebook e on mace training. Yes, uh, that's available on the stillmacewarrior.com website in case anyone's listening and they want to download that. Rick gave me the permission to put it on there. So if you guys want to go download that, that's a really good one. Yeah. And that's, you know, aside from that, there's not a lot of books out there, you know, in, in, in this country. You know, I'm sure in other countries going way, way back into the more ancient times, there's probably been many things written about Mason Club training through the ancient cultures and so on. So, Right. But that's uh, pretty much it. The people that have influenced how I program, uh, the, the base fit program, part of it I picked that up from my uh, Olympic weightlifting coach years ago, Rich Lansky. He, he taught a certain method of uh, putting together his type of a training session for Olympic weightlifting, which is ideal. And so we've used a lot of that. And then of course, Zach Evanish has been a major influence uh, on me. So a lot of what Zach has, I've been following Zach for like 14 years in the, wow. the underground program. So that had a lot to do with how, how we learned the program. And uh, Zach's underground strength manual is a great resource uh, for strength and conditioning across the board. And uh, so I, that's the book I would recommend, even though it's not specifically Mace and Club, just because it's an excellent resource. Right. And now with, with the cave and, and Mace Fit, do you, do you mix other things other than Mace and Club? Because, I mean, I, I see that you have, like, battle ropes and all sorts of other trainings. Like, what, what else do you, like, do in there? <laughs> okay. Well, the Mace Fit classes are just Mace and Clubs. Okay. Good, period. Nothing else in those classes. Okay. okay. Now, we do our regular, we call it Cave Strong Training of the Day. And like I said, sometimes I'll use the Mason and Club as part of those classes. But those are basically going to be strongman or powerlifting or Olympic lifting or underground strength training or some aspect of martial arts related for body strengthening into that. So but this is a great Mason Club train is a great fit for people that lift heavy because you, you get the traction on the joints. So they're always compressed from heavy weights compressed and compressed and compressed never lengthened and you know right I listened to you with uh, the excellent uh, podcast I did with Paul Gray earlier and he was talking about a similar thing you know your body gets the joint can only be compressed so much for something breaks down right so you've got to get some of that pressure off get the, everything lengthened and loosened and uh, refreshed and that's a, a big big benefit and that's one of the main things I talked to about for people that do lift heavy why this is so uh, beneficial right now let's say someone wanted to learn like your programming or curriculum like I know like I hear you right now and I'm like I really want to see one of your workouts like is there any place where we can go online and like check out your stuff or do you have a YouTube or yeah actually I had a big YouTube channel for years and years until Google locked me out of it one time. I couldn't get back in. No. <laughs> I started a second account, which has a little bit. I don't do that much with YouTube anymore. Right. A lot on Instagram. Instagram. Uh, at, uh, Cave Picks 2, C-A-V-E-P-I-C-Z, number two. Put a lot on there. Of course, a lot on Facebook. Uh, Twitter, uh, at D Wussified, that's on there. And uh, so all that stuff that goes on Facebook and Instagram eventually ends up on Twitter also. But I think, uh, so people go to our main website, macefit.com. We post uh, training three times a week there. So okay. you can follow up. Uh, actually, the people that get certified, they receive a training manual, has the first 12 weeks of training all mapped out for them. Oh, all wow. Written out ahead of time, okay? So then uh, they complete the training manual. Then they, then they start following what's on the website. If they go on to macefit.com, if, if you're on a desktop computer, you got to scroll down at the bottom of the page. You'll put in your email to follow by email down there. If you're on a portable device, it's usually somewhere else. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, that way, when we post a training session, it'll get sent right out to you. So. 
Right on. Yeah, I just I just feel like there's so many good, like there's you with Mace Fit, there's New Breed Mace Bell, and I see you guys on Instagram, and it's so hybrid, it's so different. And um, it's very inspirational. I love it, but it just, it's so hard. Like sometimes I'm like, oh, how'd they do that? And I just, I want to figure out like how you guys did a certain move or know a certain name. So that's why I always ask them like, how can we get information on that? So macefit.com. And then, uh, do you have anything on the cave? Do I have a, do I have, because I have a Facebook page at cave and I have okay. a, another uh, group on Facebook called Mace Fit Nation. You can go there, I post workouts on there also. And um, so the best thing is go to the website itself and you can sign up for it and get the workout sent to you. Also, if you click the about tab, all the social media links are on there. And they can go in there. And let's see. That would really be what I would recommend the most for people. Uh, but they also can feel free to ever message me or email me or even call if they have a question. That's um, not a problem whatsoever. You know, anybody we can help to get healthier and stronger, we'll be glad to do it. One thing, too, of uh, jumping back to how we run classes and the adjustable clubs. The reason we use them in particular, one is that Donnie came to us first and uh, we have extreme loyalty to him right. for, for taking the time to take a chance on us. But the, the, his design is unmatched in the Mason Club world. And that's, you know, that's why he's got it patented and everything, you know, because the right. thieves are not there. <laughs> the right, are, right. Um, but because they're adjustable, plate loadable, just like a barbell, if you, can, if you can have two people doing the same exercise, and if I got one person swinging a 45 pound club and I got someone else swinging a five pound club right next to them, no problem. Same right. exercise, same program, different loads, different weights. And that's the right. beauty of using the Addix uh, Mason Club right there. That's a big help. And it takes a lot of the intimidation away from people like they watch somebody swinging this, this humongous club around and like, well, you're not going to start there. Okay. Right. And you, might, oh, you might say on light, lightweight is fine. You know, we look at the movement more important than the load. We want good technique, good movement. And we want to see people health and fitness improve. I'm not coming here and get beat up and go to the hospital. That's not what we're about. So. Right. 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 And now talking about load, um, I've seen some older uh, women at the cave that have been using your clubs and maces like, and that's awesome to see. And I'm assuming, you know, like the Adix clubs helps a lot with, and the maces helps a lot with that too. Right. Absolutely. That's very, very true. And it, the, um, I get one, uh, Harley riding cave girl that comes in here. She's 59 years young. And, uh, you probably see her on there a lot. She gets fairly long hair. Yeah, yeah. She just, she just absolutely loves Mesa. Love it. And uh, in fact, she is a she's all she's part Native American. She's going to be touring Indian reservations with her husband, who's full-blooded Native American, and uh, she's packing her addicts equipment with her as she goes. And so we're going to be doing uh, distance training with her uh, from the different Indian reservations. So wow. So she they'll be out, and uh, also. You see a couple of other gals in here. We used to be for many years almost entirely a, a female gym. Um, wow. And people say, well, well, what happened to all the guys? You know, it's like, <laughs> well, I have a joke about that. I won't bother telling right now. But if uh, the girls stayed and the guys didn't until we got the new uh, last two or three years, we started getting a lot more guys that could handle the program and showed up regularly. And uh, so we have really tight standards here because. The gym is small by design. Membership is small on purpose. Um, no more than six people at a time in here training. And we do no advertising. Wow. And, and uh, so, like, somebody can't just walk in. I've got, you know, I want to pay for a year. No. I'm going to screen them. If their attitude stinks, I tell them to leave. Wow. That's checking price at home to go somewhere else, you know, but, but we're That's very serious about our training. We have a great time here, but it's hard. 
and it's only, it's only for the only the brave train at the cave. Very yes, I love your tagline. It's only the brave train at the cave. I love that. Yeah, this, and, you know we live we live that out, and uh, you know all on our walls you'll see all types of uh, graffiti and posters. You know, like uh, you know nobody owes you anything. You have to earn it. You know, quit whining. Nobody cares. You know that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Walls here, don't be a wuss, you know, all that stuff. Um, so we expect a lot from people, but we're going to keep it safe. We've never had a major injury as long as we've been doing this. So that's awesome. So they can come here knowing that they're uh, they're not coming here to be uh, humiliated or hurt. They're going to be encouraged and uh, get a lot of individual attention. And uh, you know, they will get healthier and stronger. Plus, every quarter. Everybody's tested. There's nine different tests we do every wow. quarter, uh, and two of them are Mason Club tests. Wow. So, yeah. So, they so they're are, like assessments, right? Yeah. Every three months, and the you know we're looking at loads, reps in a certain time frame, and so on like that. So, so we're, that so is incredible. Are uh, like, uh, you familiar with the vintage strength games? From uh, yeah, vintage strength games. Well, they're uh, Two of the events that they've used in the past, or one is a 10 to 2 for five minutes, max reps. And then the other one is a long cycle with the two, two clubs, max reps, five minutes. So that's what we use on our testing here. And, uh, and they have, a, they hit, they hit 100 reps, then the next test they get more weight. Wow. You know what? It's funny that you mentioned that. I've never been into like the competitive side of anything. And for the first time ever, Mr. Mace met for his certification. He made me do a hundred reps of the 10 to twos. And yeah. I'm not going to lie at the end, I was gasping for air. I was like, this is, this is freaking hard. It it's is. crazy. And I only did a hundred. I can only imagine five minutes. Yeah. That's, um, and you know, they do uh, was he using a competition counting for both sides for one rep or I don't we use the eight X mace for sure. It was the first time I ever put my hands on that too. So it was oh, it was yeah. a very different sensation than what I'm used to. All right, but but you know in the way in the vintage game, I don't know how they count everywhere else, but you gotta pull over both shoulders and count for one rep. Right. No, yeah, he did that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, some some people have common knowledge, some people it isn't. But just for the sake of the record, you know, involving the testing or the competition there. So, have you got a hundred reps like that? You did good. <laughs> I hope so. I was telling Mr. Mace, man, I don't know, did I do well? Yeah, you did. You did good. I was like, okay, but yeah, I've never done that type of uh, training, like competitive, you know. So it was really interesting to see the the competition side of Mace. And Mr. Maceman, I can tell you all about that. So it was very interesting. Uh, no, I'm, I'm glad you had that experience. I'm glad you got your hands on an X Mace. That's good. Yeah. And, uh, if you ever connect, I think you connect with Valerie Palowski already. Yes. That I'm, girl. Is, I'm super excited because I see her in all her live videos. She's a crazy, tough woman. I'll tell you what. You, not only is she a kettlebell champ, but she's also a mace champion. So. And she can move it, and she can go and go and go. And I can't believe it. She's so tiny. I think she's tinier than I am. Like, she's just, like, so strong. I can't, I just, I'm amazed by her. Yeah, she, she is really something. And that's, that's another thing for people that, especially gals, are still fighting the stigma of weightlifting makes you bulky, which it does not. Right. And if you don't take steroids and stuff, you'd be fine. <laughs> but, yeah. but this is ideal. Uh, for women, okay, if you just want to be stronger, more fit, they want to look fit, feel good, and uh, be stronger, you know, there's been no fear of bulking up with mason and clubs, you know. Right, right. So, I mean, why do you think you got so many women's, women in the gym, like in your opinion? What's up with all the women? Right. <laughs> Actually, there's a, there's a lot, of, uh, lot of reasons on that. One is that women are generally just more attentive to their health than men are. Women will go get physical exams and other tests during the year that men don't, don't normally go unless you make them go or, you know, <laughs> the wife nags them enough, they go. But the men are more neglectful of their health overall. And uh, 
few other things. You know, I, I usually get uh, some interesting comments here on this, but women can take uh, a lot of hard things well, you know, and, uh, and they show up often. They show up regularly, you know. And what, I, what I've seen is, uh, I haven't always found that true to be, to be true of some guys, okay? The crew we have now is phenomenal. They're very good. They can take a lot. They can take uh, a, a big dose of exercise, and they'll be back regularly. But it hasn't always been the case. So back in the earlier days, we were finding the women could hang with the program better. They did the same program the guys did. But they just stayed and stayed and stayed. And uh, usually would never leave. Uh, the only main thing would ever put a woman out of our program was if it was family related or, or marriage related. Usually there was never the training, there was never an injury or anything like that. Guys, on the other hand, uh, <laughs> you're making them sound like babies. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the two guys, you know what? Uh, a lot of guys, most guys, I'd say, are very responsible. They're, they are tough and they, um, you know, but the, the, I weed him out. You know, I weed him out. The guy is like an excuse maker. He's out of here. You know, he's not respectful. He's out of here. And uh, if he's you know, hitting on a woman for a date, he's out of here. You know, it's like, that's not what they're here for. Right. But right. Guys, so that's one reason why we had so few guys in the beginning. They just didn't feel they had too many reasons why they always were saying, oh, I don't have time. Oh, it costs too much, whatever. You know, women are doing 10 things. And they're doing one, but they don't have time. So go figure. So. Right. But the women make time. And I'm not uh, a volunteer for training guys. I want more guys in here. But you walk through the door, you better measure up. Right. There's women warriors in there. Watch right. out. I have to motivate you. You don't belong here. <laughs> right on. Okay. So let's end this right now. Where can listeners and viewers find you? I think we said basefit.com. Cave Strong, it's cavestrong.com, right? Cavestrong.net for a little .net. Okay. And then your Instagram. So I'll put all those details if you're listening to this on my blog. It'll be below. If you're on YouTube, it'll be below. If you're listening to the podcast, it'll go to my website, somebody'swarrior.com. Is there anywhere else they can find you? So I think I've already told you the Twitter and the Instagram already. Oh, Twitter. Uh, YouTube, okay. Don't worry about the YouTube too much. We don't do much there anymore. Okay. Instagram regularly and uh, sign up for emails on basefit.com and follow along. Right on. So uh, upcoming workshops, right? You have, I think it was one or two workshops. One, one left this year that's a public workshop, uh, certification. Excuse me. Okay. And that's going to be in uh, Clayton, North Carolina, which is right near Raleigh. And that will be September 22nd, 23rd. And that will be a two-day course. That would be... Uh, it's just our certification is not like this. you walk in, pay your money, get a t-shirt, go home, call yourself a trainer or a coach. Right. Not at all. We got a lot of hands-on, a lot of lecture, uh, written test and hands-on test both. And, uh, and then, you know, we uh, have the level one certification. And for the people that really want to go deeper, then we'll get, we show the promise and the, uh, we'll have them on a pipeline for level two. And, uh, oh, yeah, by the way, there's, um, we do have uh, people, once they're certified, we have a Mason Coaches Facebook page, secret group, that they will get information all the time there. And we have a public group called friendsofmacefit.com. They can get a lot of information there, too. Perfect. So they can go on there. Okay. Then I'll make sure to add all those links below. Um, thank you for being on the Still Mason Warrior podcast. We did it. I think this is, what, episode 17? So I, I really don't know where I'm going to end the season. I'm not sure yet, but thank you so much for being on here. Well, thank you for uh, allowing me to be on for a great time. I, I love your show. You're doing really good with it. Wish you the best of success. Right on. May the universe always flow with you. <laughs> <laughs>